Concrete Plus creates the reinforcement drawings for beams calculated with concrete or diamonds. Note that you cannot create new elements in Concrete Plus. You can only import beams already calculated in concrete or in diamonds. Coming from concrete, there are two ways to get the beams into Concrete Plus. Number one is by opening the concrete file in Concrete Plus. Here we have the file and now we can start editing. Number two is by clicking the Concrete Plus button in Concrete. So I will close this file. This is the same file in Concrete. We have over here a Concrete Plus button and I click it to make the transfer to Concrete Plus. This is by far the easiest and most direct way. The project list is identical to the one in Concrete. This will be our guide within the file. Let's take a look at the first beam. I double click to activate. We get some warnings and we will come back later on them. I will just click OK for now. Concrete Plus has automatically translated the theoretical reinforcement quantities into a practical scheme of upper and lower bars and stirrups. We are currently in the window reinforcement plan. And we see the long view of the beam. The arrangement and diameters of all bars and the stirrups are automatically calculated and drawn, as well as the required anchorage lengths. This window has multiple tab pages. One for the overall plan and one for each span. The overall plan has a bar bending schedule. Each tab has an indication of the used concrete and steel grades, as well as the scale and the project data. At the bottom of this window, there are a number of functions to zoom, print, create section views and see notes coming from concrete. And this is one of the messages we got at the transfer from concrete to concrete plus. I will create two section views and you can easily do this by just clicking the section view icon and dropping the cursor wherever you prefer. This is number one and this is number two. The section views immediately appear below the long view and they have all appropriate reinforcement information. After creation, you can just drag and drop them wherever you want. You can print directly from here. And you can also play with the page orientation to see whether the drawing fits best on a landscape or a portrait page layout. We also see the contours of the title frame area. It gives an indication of what will fit on one page with the current scale and layout. In the main view, so the overall plan, we can click any reinforcement and modify the lengths. For the stirrups, I can add stirrups. I can choose another stirrup form or let the wizard determine the best fitted form. Let us now modify the geometry of the beam. In Concrete Plus, a certain tolerance can be set for small dimension deviations of the reinforcement plan compared to the dimensions used in the calculation. I'm talking really about minor deviations. So it's about one centimeter or one percent. These little values allow you to stretch the results within the calculation limits. Bigger values have no meaning. You cannot stretch the results infinitely. So we can change, for example, the length of the first span to four meters and one centimeter. And we get some warnings regarding the support widths. These are recommendations from Eurocode, meaning you should provide enough space in the support to place the reinforcement anchorage. If this is not possible, you should choose another type of anchorage, for example, discontinuous. So I will choose 26 centimeters for the first support. And this is the message about choosing another reinforcement type if you cannot provide enough width. 
and that's at the width of the first support to 26 centimeters. And I will do the same for the other support at the end. We just talked about types of reinforcement anchorage. The icon palette in the middle area provides functions related to the reinforcement configuration. At intermediate supports, bars can be continuous or discontinuous. For the upper and lower reinforcement, reinforcement anchors can be bent, straight or discontinuous. And at end supports, reinforcement anchors can be continuous or discontinuous. Let's set the upper reinforcement continuous at the intermediate supports. And it's really just done with one click. So far, all diameters were automatically set by Concrete Plus. And of course, we can modify them. I switch to the window diameter determination. What we see over here is a schematic long view of the beam, not at all to scale. You can even play with the width and height in order to maximize the readability. The values shown are the theoretical reinforcement quantities coming from concrete. Values with diameters associated are proposed by Concrete Plus. Clicking on a quantity opens the dialog window where you can set or modify the number of bars, diameter, the layer, the position, suspension, etc. Bold italic values still need to be translated into practical diameters by the user. In most cases, these values are related to the reinforcement anchorage, meaning if you choose discontinuous anchorage, this is the required quantity. I will click the 429 value and let's choose three diameters of 16 and I will put them in the second layer. When determining the number of bars and diameters, you immediately see at the bottom of this window how much square millimeters reinforcement is already provided and how much is still needed. And I hit OK. And you see the diameter information is showing up. The nice thing now is that we can easily copy this value to the rest of the beam by holding the shift button down. I hover over the diameter configuration to copy. I hold the shift button down and you see that the cursor has changed in form. It's a different cursor and I move to the right and I click where this configuration needs to be pasted. In the other direction, you can use the control button to copy to the left. Going back to the main view, the reinforcement plan, I do not see the three times diameter 16 appearing. This will only be the case when I choose this continuous anchorage from the middle icon. And we get another warning regarding the support width. And here is now the three times diameter 16 discontinuous anchorage. However, I prefer in my example continuous anchorage. As you have seen, with every change you make, all drawings are updated automatically. If you prefer different, it's a setting in Concrete Plus and you can choose not to redraw and calculate the reinforcement automatically. In Concrete Plus, you have numerous options to completely customize the layout and display of all data and all text.
next to that you have various preferences regarding the diameters and the lengths of reinforcement bars and stirrups. Having the complete reinforcement plan ready, I can now go back to concrete and recalculate the deflection and crack width. Based on the real practical reinforcement, we can now verify the deformation and crack width. And I go to the additional window. Let's take a look at the results. Um, the crack width should be less than 0.3 millimeters, and this seems to be okay everywhere. And also, the deflection is acceptable. So, we can return to concrete plus, and we do not need to modify the practical reinforcement. I'm back in concrete plus, as the practical reinforcement is okay. I can export the bar bending schedule to concrete list. I open concrete list. Now concrete list generates the cutting list and summaries for beams coming from concrete plus. I import the member data and go to the bar bending schedule. This is an overview of all reinforcement needed for the beam, grouped in bending units. We see the number of equal bending units in the group, the name, the number of elements, meaning the bars and stirrups, per unit, the total number of elements for the whole group, a schematic representation of the bending shape, the different bending lengths, the cutting length per element and the total cutting length for the whole group. We can view the individual member data, the bending length, uh, the diameter, the steel quality, and so on. And we get also summary reports per diameter showing the total required weight and length for each diameter. Going back to concrete plus now, we can also make some plot files, for example, we can export the drawings to DXF, to Stracon, to Tecla Structures. And then you can create a plot file for the whole project, a class or an element. We can also make PDF report out of this I'm using the print function now. These are two pages displaying the whole beam, the bar bending schedule, necessary data, and the section views. Analogously, we can generate reinforcement drawings for the two other elements. I also have a beam with a difference in height. And one-way slab. And again, we can make a PDF report, we can export the drawings to Stracon, Tecla Structures or DXF, and send the bar bending schedule to Concrete List. Concrete Plus is the perfect software to automatically create reinforcement drawings and cutting lists, and therefore boost your productivity regarding the design of concrete beams and one-way slabs.